How are you feeling? That's such an oh. interesting yeah. question in times, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm feeling good um, right now. I think it changes all the time, but it's a good day. I got an amazing, amazing group of people I work with and so many positive things are happening. So I try to try to focus on those. Um, there's still so many uncertainties in our world. So that's, I think, one of the biggest challenges. But right now, everyone in my life is healthy and th that feels good. How are you? Hmm. I'm, I don't know, I'm getting, I'm getting better with, better with the days. Just trying to like mm -hmm. cruise by. Just do what I can really. That's yeah. it. But uh, yeah. for those who don't know, who are you and who are the people on your team? Okay, um, so I'm Nicole Fenichel Hewitt, and I have the great pleasure, honestly, of being the executive director of The Artifact. Um, so The Artifact provides a lot of different programs to young people in the creative arts, and our mission is to really help young people find their creative voice and to use that voice to better themselves and their futures, as well as make a positive impact in the community which um, Lamar, you're, you're uh, an amazing example of our mission in action. So I'm just excited to be invited to participate here. Yeah, no, it's, 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 uh, it's definitely life-changing. I think that's pretty much like, as simple as you can put it, it's like revolutionary. But uh, can you just tell me a little bit about like, the inception of the artifact and like just 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 all the background details yeah the first it's been an interesting ride um the artifact is a recently merged organization so in 2017 we we started our merger in 2018 we became the artifact but despite being fairly new we also are really really old like we have a combined history of our pre-merger organizations of uh just like 70 years so um mill street oh. loft was started in um the early 80s and children's media project was started in the early 90s and both had a mission mm -hmm. of working with children and young people um mill street was focused on on a lot of visual and performing arts and spark well, Children's Media Project changed our name. <laughs> it's complicated in 2015 to Spark Media Project. So Spark Media Project's focus was on media arts and um, the founder of Mill Street Loft. I was lucky because I followed two amazing women who founded these agencies. Um, when I was brought onto Children's Media Project, it was 2008. And the founder, Maria Moreski, who is such a visionary and just beautiful person, um, really believed in the power of media arts to transform young people's lives, to tell stories, to become introspective and learn about ourselves and to talk about really any issue. And that this is, media is um, a language. It's a language that we use to read all the time to understand and we have to also be able to write in that language to create our own media um, in today's world so that was the background of children's media project and in 2008 um, she wanted to get onto her own creative pursuits so i was lucky to to become the director of children's media project and then um quite a while later in 2017 carol wolf the founder of mill street loft similarly you know was looking to shift her life after 37 years of running Mill Street Loft. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was an opportunity for us to see these two kind of neighbor, like-minded sister organizations become one. And um, through the merger, we brought together all the, the staff, the board, the programs. And I really think that the artifact is, um, it's, like the sum is, is bigger than the parts. Um, I feel like because of all of the, the learning that both agencies did and the support they both had and the successes that coming together has given us a perspective that is larger than um, 
either of us could have had separately. So it's it's been fun. It's only I can't believe it's only uh, this is our third year as the artifact. It's really only been two complete years. So when with with this newfound success, uh, especially with like the merger of two separate organizations, uh, like what were the underlying values that you have that you also recognized in the artifact? Mm. That's a good question. Um, I was thinking about that the other day. Like, how, you know, how did I wind up running the artifact? What, a, what am I, you know, where is my background and passion leading into this? Because so much of life is like this unfolding that happens and it's really about what you're paying attention to and where, you know, definitely aligning your values and moving toward those opportunities. Um, so when I got out of I, it actually starts for me like when I was young, but <laughs> but when I got out of college, um, I guess age is perspective, right? I'm still young. Still young. Still young. <laughs> um, but when I got out of college, I actually uh, got into community organizing and I, I wound up on Long Island. I was from the Hudson Valley, but I wound up on Long Island for a little while and I was working on a ton of issues, um, issues about like affordable housing, wealth inequality, the environment, um, access to healthcare, and learned about all these different issues, learned about how to work with people to make a difference in their communities, in their lives. And Long Island wasn't a fit for me, but that kind of work I think was was the basis for me developing like my interests in career and my values in um, helping people have happier lives, which sounds really basic, but what is beautiful about the arts and what kind of led me into the arts and I started here locally at Women's Studio Workshop and then went over to Children's Media Project and now The Artifact. It was that I could do all of that same kind of organizing but with this really creative and positive way of doing it. So taking any one of those issues and looking at it um, from a community organizing perspective, it's really overwhelming. You have to learn um, all the details about all these, these really serious problems, to try to help people solve these really upsetting inequities in our world. And through the arts, it becomes joyful. It's like a way of building empathy, connection, helping people understand things that are important to every single person who's creating the artwork. Um, so I guess the underlying values are still to create a world where we all feel like we're doing meaningful work and that there is more equity in our world and that we can live happier lives at the base of it. Mm. Okay. So uh, with, with the meaningful work, I try to get all my friends to do like some like form of like art. And the question, like the main response I get is like, oh, I'm not creative or I don't have an idea or like oh, I can't draw, I can't paint. But as I think you would say, like art, there's creativity in every single person. So for somebody that would say, you know, I don't have a talent, what would you say to that? It's not about talent. We, like you just said, um, it's an expression. It's like saying, I don't, I don't wear a face. You know, I don't, I don't, um, mm -hmm exist <laughs> you know i think that a lot of people do say that um so it happens around middle school where where you know as children there's this just organic desire to create art so most kids are just happy to pick up crayons do doodle scribble whatever it is play in the dirt make stuff um and then at a certain age we start looking at our art 
as um, a reflection of our skill level and we start comparing it to other kids in our art class and so you know oh my gosh Jimmy's Jimmy's drawing is so much better than mine I'm not an artist I don't know what I'm doing and um, our belief at the artifact is well there's a multiple things here at play but one is um, it's a skill that everybody can develop if you feel like you stink at drawing you can practice and you can become a great illustrator it is discipline and hard work like many things in life but you everyone it's accessible to everyone so you you know quitting because you feel like you're not good at it or stopping because it you know it doesn't feel like you can get there um shouldn't be the place that where we land in that in that middle school age group i think a lot of people then decide like i'm going to use my electives differently because i'm not an artist um but the other piece of it is like there are so many art is such a broad term um there are so many different types of artwork everything from poetry to dance to paintings to photography to film to you know just so so many ways um that people express themselves and i bet that if we all thought about it each one of us would say oh that's how i'm creative that's how i'm producing art um but in general i don't think that you know there's art for career and then there's art for the sake of creating and through this pandemic that we're in the artifact has been posting daily art at home challenges and one of the things that i love is like they are for everybody and so many non-artists doing them they're everything from um using household items to create um shapes and uh color patterns um looking for like a piece of nature in your home and taking a photo of it and these kinds of daily practices which you don't put pressure on yourself to perfect but you just participate in feel good and the the part of art that is healing and um it's just for us like we don't have to always create for everybody. But what's beautiful about what we're doing at the Artifact is our students are developing their skills and they are sharing. And that is affecting other people in their lives. It's affecting their own ability to access college or opportunities for work. Um, so art can be used for everything from, you know, getting that premier job to just something quietly that I do for myself because it actually makes me feel really much better. Can I answer your okay. question? <laughs> yeah, you answered a couple of them. <laughs> well, uh, uh, just just keeping on the this this uh, public education, arts education uh, side. What I like the most about the artifact was definitely like what what you were saying about just creating with like out the expectation of like you know what the the one i can say in this case is like a grade a like a like a sign of like failure and it's just improvement on top of improvement so at that i'm very how would should how would you implement art into every subject or what 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 is the first step that's great. Um, well, and, and just to reference what you're saying, that's one of the challenges and one of the beautiful things about um, our work is sometimes, you know, students, students in schools are so used to a grade. And when you get that grade in school, you're given that piece of paper, that's it, right? Like you get that grade, you might see what you did wrong and what you know you might be able to use that in the future but you're not asked to like revise this do it better do it your best bring it back to me next week and let's see if we can get this to be something that we're both really proud of and that you feel is done um so so one of the beautiful things about that process of revision in the arts is it it allows us to um 
continue developing to um, answer our own questions um, with feedback. And I think that schools would benefit a lot from, from that revision process, that students would benefit a lot from that process of saying, okay, you know, I saw your draft, here's where I, where I would give you feedback and you can take it or leave it and take it where you want. Um, but to answer your bigger question, because that comes up a lot. Sometimes, especially in our media programs, um, when a student finishes a, a project and then we give them feedback, it's unexpected. It's like, wait, I was, but I was done. And it's like, yeah, but you can reshoot that one part and make it even better. Uh -huh. What? Like I was yeah. done. I'm like, no, there, there can be more. Um, it doesn't have to be done. And so that's, that's one of the fun things and interesting things about our work. But um, I love, 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 love the idea of integrating arts into schools. And I think this is a really unique time with this health crisis that we're dealing with to really start that conversation because schools have to make this huge shift. Um, and it's really, if this continues, uh, we're going to need to make a much bigger change in education than this current, um, we're going to get by with this remote teaching, um, which is kind of very light touch points, like students are being given assignments. Um, but overall, in education, I can definitely see arts being used um, across disciplines. We've done it before. So the Artifact loves to work with schools. We go into schools and um, do projects. We've done everything from lots of English projects where, uh, so for example, if you're in an English class and you, you read a book and typically you might have to write an essay or answer some questions about that book, um, ways to integrate art, everything from, you know, develop a, a poster um, representing one of the main cultural themes of that time or create a video based on um, like recreating your favorite scene in, in modern times. There's just so many ways to integrate project-based learning instead of, and a lot of it is about assessment. Like how are, we, how are we actually trying to understand the growth of our students in school? And the one way we're doing it right now is, you know, we're tracking attendance and we're tracking grades. Um, moving to a more project-based, allowing for different types of learners, uh, people who learn visually, who learn audibly, um, not only the written word, I think will really open up how we see every student's ability um, because there are just such a wide range of opportunities for students to get playful and really engage with curriculum when they're learning through the arts. We've done a series of science projects where we have students do data analysis and create art projects to tell the story that's behind the data. We've done math projects to show things like rotation and reflection in art projects and media projects. And the students um, love it. The teachers love it. The thing I think that's the barrier um, in the past is just the intense testing pressure that teachers and students are under to actually, you know, understand so much curriculum to be tested on at the end of the year when wouldn't it be great if we were developing creative thinkers who can explore lots of different types of information at their own pace in ways that interest them and show that they have learned it that they can um, demonstrate that learning through a number of different ways so i would love to see arts get integrated and one of the things i love about arts is like I was saying about my old, my old career trajectory, um, arts can be used as a form of self-expression, as a form of creativity, but it also can be used to create content that can influence others um, or that can talk about specific issues. So it's a very universal language. Okay, so uh for somebody that is ready to do a program but they don't know what they're gonna have when they leave because or a parent actually because you know there's there's no like 
assessment to check that oh my child passed or this but what what are like the top three things that a student can leave the other fetch one that that they will take away with them you mean yeah for life yeah that's a really good question i might ask you but <laughs> I <laughs> honestly throughout this i want to almost flip every question back to you um because <laughs> i'm so okay. curious as a, as a student you know when when you started with the artifact and why and how that impacted you but um i can answer your question from my perspective but i think it is okay. a little for for each student um we have students that come from so many different backgrounds who join for so many different reasons everything from a connection to kind of a group of like-minded young people um that matters you know if if you're in a setting where you're not connecting to people and then all of a sudden you come to the artifact and it's like i found my tribe um that's yeah. a life-changing thing even though it might not seem like the end game and we really focus on college and career so you know what we will do with any student that wants to stay with us for the long run is we will do our best to support that child um in their interests developing their skills to create portfolios that will help mm. them get into college or access job opportunities and use our network mm. to help with that. Can you, can you speak on some of the opportunities that students have received after their effect? Ooh, I could flip that one too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Lamar, you're an amazing uh, young man and you've, I think, been a model of how to take some of the learning that you've done at the artifact and some of the connections that you've made and then taken it to the next level so you know i remember one of the first opportunities that i remember seeing you working was we had a art after hours event and so it was uh, like a mingle like party um with food vendors and artwork at the underwear factory in Poughkeepsie and you were hired to uh, be a, a photographer for the event. And it really stood out to me because while you did your job, you were also incredible at networking and talking to people and they were interested in talking to you because you were a student of ours and it was wonderful to have you be able to tell that story. Um, and I know that that turned into some work for you, um, which was really awesome that you had that drive to make those connections and follow through on them. But, you know, there are, there are lots of them. So we hire, we hire young people um, through our youth apprenticeship production house, Forge Media. That's one of our, our kind of biggest capstone programs in the media arts. Forge is just like any other video production marketing firm that you would find, except we work with our youth apprentices. So we're able to give, you know, we're able to support our, our young filmmakers, giving them paid work to produce projects for the community. And we're able to give that at a discount to the community because we're working with our apprenticeship, apprentices instead of, um, you know, 10 professional media um, producers. So it's a really nice way for for young people to gain experience, to build their portfolio, to connect with clients. Um, and we've worked with so many amazing organizations like the Community Foundations and United Way, um, Walkway Over the Hudson. Um, I know you've done a lot of jobs outside of all of that too, but we look for opportunities. We've connected young people in our programs to social media gigs at other organizations. Um, and you know, over time, we want to really formalize building, building an externship program where we can place our students into opportunities beyond working with us because we recognize that every business is going to have something different to offer. You know, and like this, this, this theme of equality and in, in education is just like repeating through my head mm -hmm. and I don't know it's just 
I don't necessarily have a question, but can you just speak about how, like, you utilize those two and, like, how closely, like, they, they're basically interconnected at the other effects. Yeah. From, like, K through, like, college. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it's, it's been actually a lot of work that the artifact has done through our merger. Um, it was fascinating to look at all of our programs when you combine both, both organizations. I, I think of it as like bobbing for apples. I don't know why I think of that, but I picture like all of these apples, like each one of them is a program floating in this big vat. And yeah. um, it was like, wow, how do we manage this? How do we, um, you know, this one serves this group of students. This one serves this age group. This is a workforce program. This is a elementary school. This is a summer camp. It's usually tuition. This is the Art Institute. It's expensive, but r- amazing results. And what we realized um, through a lot of looking at that was a couple things. One was um, we needed to create a sequence to our programs so that they weren't all just bobbing in a vat, but they were interconnected. So you can go as a really young child into one of our summer camps or the after school program at the Poughkeepsie City School District. And you would know that, you know, if you like this, when you get to middle school, you can <laughs> join, you know, in our number of programs in the middle school. We had our Junior Art Institute and other after school programs there. And then that can lead into the high school programs. And there's like, we actually did a visual chart of this and how they cross over. But it wasn't enough because with all that sequencing, which we created um, our three E's, which we call explore, experience, and excel. And so that's the sequence. You start by exploring the arts, you build self-confidence, you practice fun, um, you engage with people, you feel proud of your work. That's the goal. And then you move into the experience level and in that level you're you're actually um, getting more serious about your skills and building more of a specific interest in you know am i am i really interested in photography or is it drawing and painting and in our excel level that's where that college and career piece takes place so you're really focused on uh, we're focused on working with students to help them access college or career and that's a whole bag of um, technical skills, job skills, and portfolio development. And our realization as we were building that, and we actually did a lot of surveying of our population too, was that even in our own programmatic structure, there were inequities. Um, we recognized that some of our tuition programs, although we were scholarshiping students into them, they still weren't working. Um, Students weren't either staying with them, there was a cultural difference, um, there wasn't a time where where students were being prepared, that you're going from an environment where you know a lot of the kids and you're you're having fun together to an environment that feels like a college class and you're sitting there and it's quiet and you're focused. So we did a lot of thinking about that Um, and we wound up creating programs to, to basically bridge every program and make sure that there's opportunities for every student in every program. And that goes both ways. That's like, you know, if you're a low income student in Poughkeepsie and you wanna get into the Art Institute, we're gonna make sure that you get the support to get into the Art Institute. We're also gonna give you tools, you know, if you need um, access to additional training or if you need supplies that you don't have, Um, or you don't know a basic uh, art skill that some of these other students have been in the program for three years and take for granted, we're going to make sure there's safety and comfort for having that conversation, that there's a group of students supporting each other. Um, And it goes for the workforce programs, you know, that if you're outside the community, you're interested in participating, some of our funding is really specific. So we can only hire in the summer, students who make below a certain income level. We work really hard to raise money outside of that funding to make sure that if you're, if you're making like, you know, this much more and you're not eligible, you're still struggling. You're still, now you don't even get an opportunity to work with us. So we raise additional money separately to provide 
equity to those students who are they're they're not like super rich students, but they're students who still need access to the program. So it's really challenging. Um, and it takes a lot of work and a lot of thought and we're still doing it. It's not done. Um, but our belief, you know, it's just one of, I think our country's biggest sins is the inequity in our education system. Um, it's unbelievable, really. It's just unreal to me that a kid in America can have such different experiences based on where they live and that so much of that is broken down by income and race lines that it, it's, um, it's a travesty really. So we're, we're doing our part to, to try to level that and um, provide access to tools that a lot of young people, no matter where they live, don't have access to. Okay. And directly just keeping right on that, uh, how, how is, could you say, social justice like measured? Like, what does that look like for, for the artifact? That's a really good question. Um, we do a lot of measuring and most of it is around, I guess there's two, two levels to that. One is um, our overall impact and how, how we measure our impact. So it's everything from individual stories where we, you know, we work with students that can share with us how it's impacted their life. Um, we're just starting now to build a way of tracking. We're actually, we got a, a it's not too small, we got a nice grant um, from Dutchess County to help us start and we also got Arts Mid Hudson funding to help us start tracking our students' growth, not only in our program, but beyond our program. Um, and that's where I think we can really claim, not that the artifact can claim any individual success, because as we know, it's just one factor and many other factors in people's lives. But the ability to show that the artifact is helping students access college, access jobs, and not just access college, but successfully complete college. Um, that I think is gonna really help us tell that story more. And the other side of it is, and, and that's huge, right? That's, it's a lot of work and we've been thinking a lot about that. We actually have been thinking about uh, you know, so we help students develop portfolios and we can call colleges and advocate to college reps on different students' behalves to get them scholarship funding and help them um, get into college. But now we're starting to think that's not enough because we have to help students actually get through college. So we're looking at ways, how can we be a resource to students in college? Um, how do we stay connected? How do we, you know, sometimes it's little things that can become a really big challenge in a young person's life in a new setting like college. Um, so we're, we're thinking a lot about that and how to track that over time and just starting to develop the tools to be able to show that because having a college degree is the number one um, thing that, actually indicates somebody getting out of poverty. And so it's a, it's a big goal of ours, but we also recognize not every student um, is gonna benefit from college or wanna go to college or have the ability to go to college. So the career piece is equally important to us. And on the flip side, I think a lot of it, you know, social justice is a huge, huge term um, and talking about educational access, access to tools and equipment and skills and community members that wouldn't be there otherwise is one piece of it. And I think that's the outward piece, but then the other piece is what's going on inside and how are we affecting each young person internally in a way that they can 
become champions for social change, go out and impact their communities, create messages and artwork that mean something to them and to their community and that can help other people maybe have a, a slight shift in perspective or a, a sense of empathy where otherwise maybe there was a lack of understanding. Um, and one other thing that we do is we do a lot of surveying of our students. Um, and we do a lot of, uh, we, we participate in what's called feedback loops, which is basically we ask people to tell us their response to either being in our programs or um, as a parent or community member, what we're doing. And then we assess that feedback. And we say to them, is this what you said? Did we get this right? Is this what you meant? And then when we get that clarification, we make changes. Um, and so that actually came up through our program. Um, survey feedbacks or feedback loops have taught us about areas that we can do better um, and areas that we have great strength in. So although that's not kind of that outward piece, I think it's really important piece of social justice. Like you can't do something without getting the participants involved and telling you if it's working and how it's working and what the impact is. So what's, so what would, what would be the, uh, not the first step, but what would be like the tipping point almost that when Poughkeepsie could be almost fully art organized? Mm. What would that look like? Mm. I'm excited about that idea because last night actually I was on a Zoom call with um, a whole bunch of members including the head of the board and the superintendent of the school district in the arts community. It had tons of gallery owners, local artists, Artsman Hudson was there, and it was just a really amazing group of people talking about that exact thing. Like, how do we as a group of artists support the school? The school is moving toward what's called a community school, which is looking at engaging um, the community organizations and individuals recognizing that learning happens not just in the school, it happens in every aspect of a child's life. So I feel like there's this, this change brewing right now. And again, this is such a weird moment in time with a pandemic, it creates this opportunity, people have to think differently. Um, you know, whether this kind of peaks again or not, it's creating a shift where we recognize like we have to be prepared for something like this. And the arts is such a great tool for engaging young people in any content in this unique moment where we can't, we have to be isolated. So having that conversation with the arts community last night gave me a lot of hope because I felt like, well, that was the first step, right? Like the first step was everybody's super excited and filled with um, desire to do this. Like there is desire. And I think with the schools, it's, it's um, there's a lot of change coming. There's, you know, our superintendent is now only been there, not even a full year. And there's a recognition of the inequities the school funding is a challenge so that's where the community comes in like if we want to do this the school doesn't have the budget to just bring in all of these artists and art agencies how do we as a community help subsidize that cost um because it is to me the most important thing you know any any time the community gets together and talks about any number of issues if young people aren't at the table um we're missing an opportunity to not only hear from them, but to build that leadership because life just keeps happening. We're all going to just keep moving through life and getting older and our young people, we need to invest so much in them. So I was really motivated, excited, um, thrilled to see so much interest from the arts community 
in figuring this out. Um, so I'm hopeful that over the next few months, we're going to keep having those discussions and be able to come out with some sort of tangible um, shift in the school and how we all take both that in school and out of school role and um, do more as a, as a community. Yeah, I was just about to say, well, I, I wasn't in this meeting. I would love to be there. Yeah, <laughs> we need you there. It sends out links. I got an invite from Mr. Gully Stanford. Uh, yeah, yeah. Her, her. Well, whenever there's one, look out for me. I will. I will definitely. It'd be great to, to have you there. Okay, uh, if you have any last remarks, any. Well, I know, um, I know there's something coming up that you would like to talk about. Yeah, we have um, real exposure coming up Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, yeah, that's crazy. yeah three it's, days. it's three days. Usually, we have um, our film festival at the Bardavan every year, it's an international mm -hmm. teen film festival. We always have some amazing work from students here in Poughkeepsie and in the Hudson Valley, but then there's work submitted from all over the world. So it's, I always think of it as like a really incredible opportunity to, to hear what young people are wanting to express. Um, and they, the films range, there's every genre, you get music videos, you get um, narrative films, you get horror, you, you get it all. Um, and they're all short, they're under 10 minutes each, so it's really fun. But this time, because we can't do it in person at the Bardavan, um, we're kind of excited to to do it virtually. I think unlike a lot of events, this event yeah. kind of fits the virtual platform, right? It's it's I, it's film, it's media. Yeah, yeah we're definitely. splitting it over you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at seven o'clock, and people can see it on um, the Artifacts Facebook, YouTube, or on our website, feeltheartifact.org. And we're going to be live seven o'clock. Um, yep, yeah, short intro half hour of youth produced films uh, each night. And then on Sunday, the final night, we're doing the award ceremony and a live Q and A with some of the winners and they're from all over the world. So that'll be really fun. And then we have the virtual photo exhibit that we've paired with it this year. Exposure used to be its own separate event, but we combined them because again, with the merger, we are like, it's the same exact, like we're doing photo and film, a huge call for entries, a huge exhibit, like let's combine these two. Um, it's the same people we're reaching out to. So we have 50 students who got into our photo um, exhibit and that is, yeah, <laughs> I think you might be in there, Lamar. <laughs> my, my. Yeah, <laughs> and so that's, um, we're building both, both a virtual gallery that you can kind of literally like walk into and explore and it's got all these art panels is really beautiful or just a straight up photo gallery that you can look at each picture if that kind of virtual experience is too much um so all of that is feeltheartifact.org on friday through sunday i'm really excited and hoping that a lot of people check it out um because now we don't have the the geographic barrier and it is an international festival so let's see mm -hmm. Yeah, that would always be like one of like my like biggest pet peeves. It's like when somebody wins and then it's like, but like they're in like Saudi Arabia or like Peru. So there's a video, but it's like now it, it it's, it's, yeah, it's going to be well, good. I'll, yeah. I'll be, yeah. It is interesting, right? One of the things that is coming out of this is like, wait, we can live like have a live Q and A, even if it was an in-person program, like that piece, like you just said, like we can't hear from you. Well, actually <laughs> we can, we can just get up a screen and put a Zoom room up at the Bardavan if we do it that way next year and hear from everybody. Um, so a lot of interesting things are coming out of this time and I'm, I'm hopeful that it's gonna create balance, creative energy, um, and shift some structures that seemed kind of impenetrable before. Um, 
And maybe I'd love to hear, you know, if, if you wanted to talk for a second about like why you joined the artifact, I'd be interested to hear that. Okay, Ooh, let's get ready. Okay. okay. Why did I join the artifact? Uh, the f first time I did the program was 2014 or 15, and that was at Marist College. Mm -hmm. With uh, it was a PS, it was a, it was a video PSA about consent with Planned Parenthood, and I was the um, I was a cinematographer, and it was just like, who are these people in here telling me what to do? It's like, I think that that was like I was in eighth grade, so it was like. Oh my God, I don't want to be here. Leave me alone. Let me let me play my video games. And then yeah, I just like I put up the first shot, and after like seeing it like being edited, I was just like, wait, what? Like seeing it come together and then shown in front of everybody, and then like oh, you're just like I was like, well, what was that? What was that? And then yeah, that's when. That's when the bug bit me. Mm. And I did, I think, three more programs after that. Like, one or two, actually. And then I was like, I'm good. I'm going to buy my own camera. I'm going to start. But then, yeah, the prices were like, I, would, I did not know anything. And then I joined back uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. And then ever since then, it's just been full throttle. Just like school just was never a place for me. I, I never really understood the, the like, the do this, do that with like, and then anytime I questioned something, it was just like, no, this is how things are. And the thing with like the arts, it's like, yeah, why are things like that? Mm. Yeah, never mind. You don't have to do that. You can actually do this and self explore. That was the biggest thing. Like, there's no such thing as like failure. It's just like, it's only if you like quit on yourself. That's the only time you can actually fail. It's when you just don't try. And. Yeah, just for for like everything, just like I would go home, be told what to do, then I'll go to school, be told what to do, then I would come to the artifact, and then Paul would be like, what do you think? And I'd be like, uh, what? <laughs> so yeah, it's just like activated. And then even like after the program, then when I would like go back to school, and then it's just like, blah, 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 blah. Then it's like, damn, I wonder what we're doing a program today. Mm. Like, that's, that's, that's all I think about. And then, and then when I found out that it could be a career, it was just like, that's when, like, I just signed my name. Like, it was, it was just, it was gone after that. It, it reminds me of um, one of our early missions at Children's Media Project was uh, to create a teaching and learning environment. And the idea was always that um, in any situation, we're teachers and we're learners. And I, I believe that so much, you know, I, I have learned a lot from you and I think that um, our teachers know that. It's not like I'm the knowledge holder and I'm dumping knowledge into you and you just receive it, just take it all and that's it. And then I close the jar. <laughs> um, that it's a give and take and it's an exploration and the whole ability to like, it, it's kind of heartbreaking what you just described because it's like that, that uh, ability of 
being tested creatively and thinking on your own and not just having to memorize or listen and understand somebody else, um, it's what is going to save our world. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, we need to be creating creative thinkers um, above people who can, you know, like we need, we need creative solutions in this world and we need creative thinkers, I don't care, whether you go into business or farming or the arts, you know, being a creative thinker is so important. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you say that, that like just dumping, because for everybody that's watching that will now take an artifact program, <laughs> it's, uh, it's crippling the first time. It's like, mm. it's like, what if, what is going on? And it was it was it was like very like it was a very scary thing of you know you're going to think and you're going to think every second that you're here, mm. and then when you leave, you're still going to think, mm. and it it just like goes with every level because you know you start with explore, you know it's just you know yeah. which 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 crayon do I want? And then experience is like, okay, what I want my character to like look like. And then Excel is like, how do I how do I show somebody is going through jealousy uh with uh like an eight millimeter camera? And it's it's just, it's just like deeper conceptual thinking. And it's really like what you said, it's like what's gonna save the world. Yeah. Well, I am just thrilled to have this time with you. Thank you, Lamar. Thank you. Everything. So, uh, as as we close out, I just want to, you know, shout out everybody at the office and not at home, actually. Yeah. 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 All the all the artifactors out there working hard. It's honestly um, just for me, like it's shine a, it's shining a light on like how incredible the team is there um, in this time where you know people could be looking for the like opportunity to stick their feet up and relax. Um, I really feel like my team's worked harder than ever to provide as much remote opportunities as possible to keep kids script writing, editing, developing public art projects, all in this format of Zoom classrooms and checking in and calling and trying um, to keep our students engaged and employed and creating. Um, so yeah, shout out to the team. Mm, can you drop some of the names? What are the names on the team? Sure. There's so many, but <laughs> I'll, I'll start with my, like my, my full-time team, you know, Mary Ellen um, has been doing an incredible job kicking butt, keeping everything going. We have um, Jordan running the art Institute and Lauren running our summer camps. We've got Paul, like you mentioned, Zoo and Spark Studios running our youth employment and film programs and David doing Mad Lab, um, running all of our public art design programs and a lot of graphics and engaging a lot of kids in, in the city. We've got Sarah who's doing communications and supporting in different ways. Um, our development team, Anna, Angela back in the office. We've got Denise working on finances. Our team is robust. <laughs> there are another 20 to 40 incredible teachers out there doing a ton of work with us. Huge. So many people to thank. And you know, our board of directors too, incredible group of leaders who has helped this merger happen, has helped us strategically vision and um, really keeps us as a as a team on point with our mission um i really appreciate their their higher level thinking um and they're thinking about some of those heavy issues that we talked about they don't shy away from the hard stuff <laughs> and our students and alumni um honestly like it's like you said it's not easy uh our 
our young people work really hard in our programs. Um, it's, pushes people to the edge, you know? It's really uh, different for every student. In a good way. Yeah, in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I wore, I, I wore my t-shirt. I wasn't sure if you were going to wear yours. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think our students, uh, obviously, yeah. like, we wouldn't um, have any, anything with, without I them am. doing their work. Um, for, well, but three weeks. Yeah, yeah. OK. Because they're like, um, Meaning and purpose. You, you have you are you that many people are willing to, to jump um, on board. You have the tax for the close training camp. Is that David? <laughs> like you know the opening close. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's I can Yeah, that's pretty much that everybody. Um <laughs> yeah, it seems okay. you can get so uh yeah, yeah just not drop so social medias. Uh just if you want to say the the, the, the real exposure one last time any last things yeah thank you um yeah definitely you can you can find us at the no um, we're done for today on all your favorite social media platforms tomorrow, the artifact or the artifact sure, so. and yeah. um Let's give them five minutes. You know, we're, we're doing our best to provide programs for everybody Versus right now so in the summer oh, we'll be doing in person, virtual, uh, Zoom, uh, all sorts of things. So, uh, you know, all um, the if you find an opportunity for you or your child or know. your friend or your neighbor to join the artifact and um, help us make a better world. <laughs> and with that, it's Nicole. Class, I, you know, I taught class in the spring. Cue it. That's real talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Stay safe, stay healthy. Pray it's still